Hey there, we're here at the Tussahaw Water Treatment Facility in, the, in Jackson, uh, in Henry County Water Authority. Uh, we're going to be doing two tests today. We're going to be doing an iron test on our raw and finished water, and we're also going to be doing a manganese test on our, our raw water, our filtered water, and our finished water that we send out to the distribution system. These are the samples that we're going to use for our iron test today. Uh, 10 milliliters of water, blank, a raw sample and finished sample. I'm going to add the TP TZ reagent to each sample now. I'm going to let those sit. Reagents have been added to all three of them. There's our blank, there's our raw sample in the middle, and there's our finished. Now they've sat for about a minute or so with the reagent and they've been shaken and they to mix pretty good. Let's go ahead and get started. And insert our blank first. Zero it out. And go ahead and pick up our raw sample. And we're going to read this one. 0 0.055. Let's see, this will be recorded as 0 0.06. And for our finished, zero. We've removed all the iron from this sample. That concludes the iron test. For our manganese test, I've drawn up these samples. They're 10 milliliter samples for manganese. Uh, this is the blank, the raw sample filtered sample and the finished sample. I'm going to add these pill packs of ascorbic acid and what that will do that will break down the insoluble manganese, manganese that's been oxidized and it'll convert it back to a soluble form so it can be read through the spectrograph. We'll be adding the alkaline cyanide next. Next we're going to add some alkaline cyanide. And what this will do, this will keep any interfering contaminants from affecting our test results. One is hardness of water. Another is copper and lead. And there's numerous other ones that will affect the final reading. This is 12 drop. Mix these up. Now that we've uh, mixed our alkaline cyanide, 
into the sample is good. We're going to add our pan, and this is going to bind to the soluble manganese. And the order of mixing is important because we don't want the pan to combine with any of the other contaminants or interact with the hardness to give us a, give us a bad result. We want good results. I don't shake these. I'm going to go ahead and just mix these up. Like this. And we're going to let these sit for three minutes. And give it adequate time to bind with all of the soluble manganese. All of our samples have sat for about three minutes and we're going to go ahead and start the test. Uh, we're going to begin by zeroing, zeroing it out using the blank. And you know the blank has no manganese in it. And our next sample we're going to measure is our raw, raw water. I'm just going to read it. Point zero two seven. And we always run that up to the hundreds. Point zero two seven is really point zero three. Now for the important one to us is our filtered result. This tells us how well our potassium permanganate is working. Point zero zero eight. And so we know from the sedimentation basin that all the uh, soluble was turned to insoluble manganese and it came through the filter we still have 0 0.008 8 thousandths of milligram of a liter of soluble manganese making it through the filters which is perfectly acceptable 0 0 and of course the most important one is what we're sending out to the public this is our finished from our tank And it's the same, 0 0.008. Those are good results considering some of the numbers we've seen in the past when the reservoir turns over. It can get really hard uh, to remove all the manganese. And that's a pretty good result right there. And we're happy that the reservoir is done turning over so far this year. Uh, we're heading into the fall months. Well, that concludes our iron and manganese test here at Henry County Water Authority. Uh, we've removed 100% of our iron uh, from the raw water. We went from a 0 0.06 milligrams per liter in our raw to zero in our finished water. Uh, for manganese, we achieved a 75% reduction. We went from 0 0.03 milligrams per liter to 0 0.008 milligrams per liter. So there's always room for improvement. We'll keep fine-tuning as needed. Uh, better numbers here means better water for our customers, and plus it's better for our distribution system too. Thanks.